Sunscreen is still one of my most important skincare ingredients in my daily skincare regimen. And we're gonna see how these eight products look on my 63 year old skin. Hi, I'm Glory B. And hopefully by now you figured out that wearing sunscreen daily, 365 days a year, rain or shine, is still an important step in protecting your skin every single day. Now I'm going to demonstrate and actually put on my skin eight different sunscreens, trying them without foundation and with a sheer foundation. If you wanna skip right to that and you don't wanna hear any of my introduction, then you need to go to the timestamps, which are in the description box below. Tap or click the word more to open that up and you can go right to the timestamps by brand. So I did have some criteria in choosing these eight. First of all, they needed to be a physical mineral sunscreen, not chemical. And why is that? Because chemical sunscreens are more harsh on your skin. I have sensitive skin. So years ago, I learned to look for what's called physical or mineral active ingredients in a sunscreen. And those two ingredients are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. And then second, I needed to have all these products be unscented. I cannot do scents. There are a lot of YouTubers out there saying what their holy grail type of sunscreen is or what brand and I test it and it smells like perfume and I have to return it because I can't stand the smell. Those are the two things. Now I'm doing both tinted and untinted in this video and I wanna know how does it look by itself? Many of you don't wear foundation, many of you don't wear a BB cream and then how does it look with a sheer foundation? I'm using the same foundation every single day for all eight that I'm testing. All products are linked in the description box below. Tap more or click that word more to open it up and you'll see that as well. One more thing before we get into all eight where I show you exactly how they work on my skin. All sunscreens have a shelf life, which means they should have an expiration date on them. Of the eight I have, I found expiration dates on set of seven of them. So in the ones that have a tube, it's usually crimped on the top. And then one that was a jar, it's on the bottom. And then let's see, uh, one that's a bottle, a pump bottle, it was on the bottom. So make sure to look for that. You don't wanna buy too much of it in advance, even if it goes on sale, cause you don't want it going bad. All right, let's get right to the first one. My face is freshly washed. I have all of my serums on, and now I'm going to put on the Paula's Choice Skin Recovery. I want you to see how thick this is. And I'm gonna do, you know, that quarter teaspoon, which I forgot the measuring spoon, but quarter teaspoon is about that much. And it's nice and thick. It has really no scent. I like to smush it around and get it right under my eyes. I just, I don't put it on my eyelids. Skincare products, if you've ever noticed, you put it on close to your eyes and it gets into your skin and then it, it does a little bit of traveling once it's in your skin. So I pull it down my neck and you can see how white it is. But I'm going to wear makeup. So in the next clip, we'll see how this looks with makeup on. It's been about two hours since I finished putting on my makeup. And this morning, since this is the first of all of the sunscreens, I decided to use a sheer foundation. I'm using the Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is their sheer long wear makeup. And it truly is sheer. I've only had a sample of this. And then I actually got this yesterday. It's very liquidy. And I did apply it with a slightly damp beauty blender and then my brush, just like I do with my full coverage foundations. 
and yeah it comes in a plastic bottle like this a little too bright in here to get that but another thing that you might try as a more sheer is a bb cream i really like the l'oreal skin Be magic skin beautifier bb creams these when they come out of the tube they're white you put them on your skin and then they turn turn to whatever color they're going to be now the thing is of course you can't sample these colors in a store because it's drugstore but what you can do is buy them at a store that has a good return policy so alta has a great return policy and another one is walgreens if you buy a product and you use it and it's not right for you you can return it so you could buy a couple colors of the bb cream if you're not into full coverage foundation and try that but i would say that this one this paula's choice skin recovery sunscreen it only stays whitish for maybe 20 minutes and i have some time in the morning between putting this on and starting my makeup and then i'm in a really close up <laughs> five times magnification or 10 times magnif magnification mirror due to my aging eyes. And it's not really whitish anymore. So if you don't wear foundation and you're not going to, you don't want a BB cream, you don't want a sheer foundation, or let's say um, I also recommend sunscreen for men. Men need sunscreen just as much as women do. And so if you use a mineral sunscreen like I'm suggesting, and you get that whitish tint by the time you leave for work or you're in your first zoom call of the day it shouldn't be white anymore so i'm really liking how this looks even with the sheer foundation so let's go on to the next sunscreen next up is the paula's choice calm mineral moisturizer i would hold it up to the camera but it's too light to pick up so i'll put it on the screen this one i wanted to try because so many people have sensitivities to all kinds of products. And she has this whole skincare line called Calm that is great for people who have eczema or rosacea or just are just extra sensitive to skincare products. So this one, I'm going to measure my little quarter teaspoon. I mean, doing a little more reading last night on uh, the amount of sunscreen and they're even saying for neck and face it depends on how big you are of course and how much how much face and how much neck you have and they were saying even a third of a teaspoon to a full teaspoon that's a lot um and it's winter and i'm not at the beach you know if i was going outside of the beach or the pool then of course i'd be reapplying and probably not even putting on foundation okay so i'm going to scoop this out onto my fingers and I know it's unrealistic to think you're going to take a quarter teaspoon measuring spoon into the bathroom but that's a quarter teaspoon that's a lot all right yeah that's a lot of stuff that is a lot <laughs> okay so it's really white so i'm going to bring this i have a really small face my face is so small that i have to wear like buy glasses and sunglasses that are super small i can buy a baseball cap that fits a child's head i once did that at the gap i bought the kids version okay so <laughs> this looks like a mask okay you know what i'm going to do i'm going to come back to the camera before i put on my foundation which should be in about 45 minutes or so and um so that you can see in case you're a person who doesn't wear foundation you can see what it looks like okay <laughs> it's like a halloween mask all right i'm going to check the time i can't see that because i have a computer in front of me it is just about 7 a.m so i'm going to come back before i start my makeup and we'll see how this compares so i might take a little still shot here and have it for the next shot to compare side by side 
you know what? I didn't have to wait an hour. It's only been 16 minutes. I was doing some things, throwing it on the wall, a load of laundry, and I walked by a mirror. And it's not as white. So I think as time goes on, I can still feel it. But um, yeah, hopefully that picks up in the camera and through whatever screen you're looking at, that it's not as white. So give it some time. If you don't wear foundation, if you don't wear BB cream, just do some things around the house and this is all going to get into your skin and you're not going to have that white cast. And if you wear foundation or BB cream, great. So in the next clip, we'll see how this looks with foundation. Here's the finished look with that same foundation, the Paula's Choice Calm. Really, you can't go wrong with a Paula's Choice mineral-based sunscreen. They really are wonderful and you know you want to buy it either when Paula's Choice has a sale or buy it with my discount from the description box below. These are wonderful and in the past I've had a little bit of rosacea. Um, it seems to have cleared up from diet and whatnot over the years but when it was a little bit redder going with something like this the calm would have been great but yeah the, the white ishness from the zinc oxide pretty much goes away. This is the dermatology brand sunscreen called Daydream. It's fairly new. Um, I'm really liking it so far. Now when I first saw it I thought in a jar really but it has this pump action and I've already pumped some out for the b-roll. I want to show you how it comes out and um, so it's kind of like it's being in a tube. Of course, if you take out too much, you can't put it back. But I already have a little bit from the B-roll um, already on the top of this. That's why I didn't put the lid back on. So what I'm going to do is try to get <laughs> my quarter teaspoon. And um, I guess I'll keep pumping it until I have that much. I'm not doing a rounded quarter teaspoon. I'm doing a level. Okay. So this one's really nice. It's creamy. It's not liquidy. It's not super thick. Um, it reminds me of the consistency of Paula's Choice. And I can get it really close to my under eye area and take it down my neck so yeah so it, you know it's got the zinc oxide in it so I'm going to have the whitest cast of course it has no scent at all and I don't get my little all right it's actually basically still the middle of winter where I live but I always wear sunscreen. Um, it's not sticky. It feels a lot like sunscreens do when you put on sunscreen in the summer on your whole body. A good one anyway that's UVA and UVB protectant. So um, let's see. It's not, you know, it's not as whitish as that one I put on yesterday. So I think this is going to absorb into the skin nicely and then we'll try it with my sheer foundation. This is a couple hours later with a full face of makeup. Of course, I don't put foundation on my neck. So my neck isn't whitish. I can still kind of feel the product on my skin. You know, like when you put sunscreen on your whole body when you go out to the pool and then you touch your skin. That's how it feels. But it's not whitish. So I think the makeup is doing okay. When I applied my makeup over this one, um, because it's a medium coverage foundation, it took a little more work. I mean, I couldn't use my beauty blender with it. I just had to use a brush to blend it out. And then it looked okay, probably because of how much product I put in, how much sunscreen I'm putting on. I really like this dermatology product. I think they used to have well, they do have other sunscreens. They have some that are tinted, but this one's nice because it's truly fully mineral. 
and it's new. So, you know, they've been working on it for a while and yeah, it's a good product and I think you'd like it. In this clip, I'm using the Abaji Medical Physical Defense 40 Mineral Sunscreen Lotion by Susan Abaji MD. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And it truly is a lotion. I can shake it and hear it in there. So it's not a cream. So I expect it to be a little more liquidy. Let's open it up and put it onto a quarter teaspoon. Oh yes. Okay. I hump that up a little bit. Let's get that onto my fingers. Let's see how runny it is. Yes, it is runny. It's more like a lotion you put on your body, but you know, the number of ounces in here, 3.4 ounces. It's a lot of money for a body <laughs> lotion. Okay, I'm just going to smear it on my fingers. I've got my mirror on the side here. And my neck. Don't forget the neck. Because that quarter, oh yeah. Lots of zinc oxide in this one. It's a high percentage. So, <laughs> good for um, people who are outdoors a lot. I'm thinking about when I was a kid at the pool and the, the guards would have an extra thick zinc oxide on their nose. Okay. <laughs> Wowzer. So this, <laughs> it looks like a mask, doesn't it? So, yeah. I, I think of all of the ones I'm testing here, this one is the highest zinc oxide. Okay. So, you know what? Let's see how this one looks in about an hour. Let's see what time it is right now. It's 7.48 on a weekend. So let's see how this looks without foundation. And I'll be right back. Well, it's 8.52. It's exactly an hour later. I just blew out my hair, but look at my face. Okay, I think this is because this Obaji is 12% zinc oxide. And when I went to dry my hair, I'm like, wait a minute. My forehead is completely clear now. I don't know why. I don't know if because I put my hair in a towel and maybe the towel brushed my forehead. But anyway, it's kind of pilling. Um, it's a lot of zinc oxide and again a quarter teaspoon on me is a lot of product so it's pilling on i'm going to take the tissue it's pilling on my neck um it's not summer as i'm filming this anyway it is um it's march and it's cold so um but other than the pilling i'm not going to wipe away the whiteness because I still want to see what it looks like with, with that sheer Estee Lauder foundation. So let's see that next. Now with the foundation on, I think this has redeemed itself. It's now three hours later, so it's almost 11 o'clock, three hours after I applied it. I think it looks better without the foundation. So if you're going to use this on your face, you need to use foundation. Here I can still, on my other mirror here, I can still see some on my neck, a little bit whitish here. I'll get closer so that you can see the lower part of my face on my neck. This camera doesn't have a zoom, sorry. So here's my lower face and here's my neck. Here's where it is still a little bit whitish three hours later, but that's what you get with a 12% zinc oxide. So, you know, if you really need something that's going to really, really, really help you and you're okay with zinc oxide on your skin, then this is a good one if you just need that level of protection. So let's get on to the next sunscreen. Next up is the Skin Medica Essential Defense. 
that are this has a nice pump. It doesn't pump too much at a time. Oh, it has to be upright. It's a pump. Okay. I it's kinda it's a little bit drippy. Not as drippy as the one from yesterday or the last one I did. Um I'm gonna scoop it out of my hand. I'm not gonna put so here it is in my hand. A quarter teaspoon. This one's six percent zinc oxide. So let's see how this absorbs into the skin. Okay. It's thicker. And since the, the bottle's smaller, I think it's meant for the face. All right. It's going on nicely. It obviously looks whitish on. So because it does, before I put on this, the um, foundation, I'm going to come back and we'll see how this looks. It's got, oh, it's sticking to my under eye here. Isn't that weird? Right under here. I didn't do anything different with my two under eyes, and, but this one, it was kind of gathering, so I don't know. Like it, <laughs> you know how you take lotion out sometimes and it's got a little bit at the top? that was a little bit thick, but this thing doesn't get air in it, so I wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't think that would happen. And I haven't used it on my face before. I wanted to do it first here. I've just pumped a little bit out on my hand when I first received it, just to know what to expect. Um, but that's been, that's been a while. Okay, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back before and let's see how it looks in like an hour. It's about an hour later and it's almost fully absorbed. I see a little bit of white up here. That's kind of weird. So I think I'm just going to rub it in. Maybe I, I think I had another skincare product that I'm trying that I had applied on my lip lines. But other than that, it's not like the one previous. Um, so I think the foundation is going to go on nicely over it. And we're going to look at the foundation next. And here we are with a full face of makeup. I think it looks a little bit shiny. Uh, in here, I'll have to compare all of my videos side by side to see if this one's shinier than the other, of course, in real life without a camera, without a video, without a screen, I think it looks shiny. But, um, yeah, it's kind of weird. And where I had that extra sunscreen up here from the Skin Medica, that's pretty much, yeah, that took care of itself with the foundation. I made sure I buffed that out really well with the foundation on top. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Today's sunscreen is the Dermatology Physical Tinted Moisturizer SPF 44. So we're starting with the tinteds. Not my favorite thing um, to have tinted, and I'm not going to use the quarter teaspoon method here because, you know, <laughs> it's color. And so I'm going to take out as much as I think I need. This isn't a nice pump. It's pretty thick. Can you see that? So it's not drippy. I've got one coming up that is drippy. So with this one, you know, I want to see what I'm doing. Um, some of you can get away with using a tinted sunscreen and not have to use any foundation or BB cream. I don't think I can. And I didn't bring any of my tools with me in here. Brushes or anything. So 
I'm just going to pretend like I don't have any. All right. And, you know, I would usually put this on my neck, but I'm, I'm concerned about, because I don't do foundation really on my neck. I blend it in this area, and um, I don't want to get it on my clothes. So it's a lot of times why I don't go with the tinted, but a lot of women love the tinted. So it is blending in nicely. I'm going to try my my 10x mirror here to see closely anywhere that I missed or is it doing a weird thing? You no, know, it, it's actually working nicely with pores. But what I'm going to do is come back in an hour or so before I put on foundation just to look at it one more time and to give it an hour so I can see what I look like in a mirror outside of the studio with the bright lights. Just to give you my opinion. Now, it's not really daylight. It's starting to be daylight here, but not quite. Um, but I want to see <laughs> if I like the color. You know, it's like a BB cream, but you didn't get to choose the color of the BB cream. That's what a tinted sunscreen is like for me. All right, so let's see it back in an hour. It's been about an hour. I just looked at my skin in a five-time magnification out in daylight, in sunlight, and just in a sunny room. And it looks okay. I mean, I could get away with it being kind of like BB cream, but I don't want to. <laughs> I need more coverage, so I'm going to go with that foundation, that Estee Lauder that I've been using this year, and let's see next how it looks with that foundation. And here I am with the foundation on. I think I look better with foundation than with that little bit of tinted product. Now, the thing is, I'm not a big fan of tinted because I'm going to use less. What am I going to do with a quarter teaspoon of that on my face? And again, I'm not putting it on my neck because I don't want it getting on my clothes. So I'm going to use less. So I'm not a big fan. Um, if you want, of course, you can use the tinted, put on as much as you think you need, and then wait a little bit and put on another layer. That might give you that quarter teaspoon just on your face. And then I think it could work. So I think the color was fine for me. You'd have to try it with your own skin tone to see if it works for you. I think it's thin enough, thin enough, you know, less opaque that it could work with a lot of skin tones. Now, of course, the tint helps to cover up the zinc oxide. So you don't see that whitish at all. And that is, I think, why a lot of people like a tinted sunscreen with the mineral physical sunscreen. So I'm on the fence about this one. It's good if you like tinted, then it's excellent. But um, yeah, but do you like tinted at all? All right, let's go on to the next one. This sunscreen is the Elta MD Skincare UV Elements Broad Spectrum SPF 44. It is tinted. So it comes in a tube, but it does have a pump. I'm going to pump some on the back of my hand. So it's not drippy. It's pretty thick. So let's see how this goes on. Hmm. So um, the good thing is it's not making any kind of weird color on my face. And I need a little more close-up mirror. But again, I'm not doing that quarter teaspoon. Okay, well for a tinted, so far I really like it. Let's see if I can get it right under my eye. I like that it's 
thick. And I love that it has no smell. Oh my gosh. So many of those tend to do. But I know I told you in the beginning that one of my criteria was that these sunscreens, full spectrum sunscreens, had to be completely unscented. And here comes the garbage truck. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. I want to see what this looks like in an hour before I put on foundation, so I'll be right back. It's about an hour later. I actually like how this looks on my skin. It's not overly shiny and um, to touch it, you know, it doesn't feel like it's going to come off. It has a tint. It's, it's not as much as um, the BB creams that I have that I like. So I need foundation because I freckle faced and now age spot faced. <laughs> I think this is one you could get away with if you like a tinted and you don't like it to be super shiny as long as you like the color. I mean, it doesn't really match my neck color, but, but it is, it is doable, I think. So let's see next how it looks with foundation and a full face of makeup. And here it is with foundation. I'm actually liking how it's looking. It's not coming through as shiny. So this one is doable for me. I'm still, you know, how much product am I using? Probably less sunscreen than I need. I lean toward getting a plain sunscreen and then putting my own foundation over it. But if you like tinted, this is a good one. I like that it's thick when it comes out of the tube and, you know, it doesn't run. But speaking of liquidy and runny, let's go on to the next one. This is the Neostrata Sheer Physical Protection Sunscreen. Now this one is liquidy and it says to shake it beforehand. And you know how when you shake a bottle, of nail polish and it has the one or two beads inside that shake everything. Well, that's what this has. I can hear the little beads inside. <laughs> and this one's tinted. So I'm going to pour some on my hand so that you can see how liquid it is. See, it's drippy. Drippy. All right. This should be interesting. So it has, hmm, the feel of it is like a really thin foundation. Thin and sheer. So even using my mirror here on the side, I think I need more, you know? Well, the color is fine. It's not orangey. Hmm. I didn't think I'd like it because of how thin it is. But... It almost goes on invisible. I don't know if you can see, it's not all that tinted, but I'm, what I'm gonna be wearing today, I don't want that getting onto, I don't want the product getting onto my clothes. So yeah, and it actually feels okay. So, it's not shiny. It actually, I would say it dried nicely. It's got more of a softer touch to it. So I'm not going to come back in an hour before I put on foundation. We'll just see how this looks under foundation. Unless an hour from now before I start my makeup, there's something about it that's changed. The next time you see me, I'll have foundation on. And here I am with the foundation on. I have a confession to make. I put this one in the list to try 
later in the video, even in my day-to-day -day testing of this, because I thought I was going to hate it because it's so thin. And I have to say, out of all of the tinted, I like it the best. So I like how it ended up being on my skin. If you wanted to wear it by itself, any of these tinted, this is the one that is the least shiny looking. Or if you really want to protect your skin, but you don't want to wear foundation or BB cream, and you want to put on another untinted one, which, <laughs> you know, with all these tinted, I didn't put them on my neck, but it's winter. So right now, well, where I live, it's getting to be spring, and I'm launching this in spring, this video. I would put an untinted one um, sunscreen on my neck, but you could put a little more on your face and then top it with this. And I just like how my skin looked with this one better than all the others. So, you know, you can't see, you know, there's no whitish, of course, and you can't really see it with the sheer foundation. And it just gave a nice, soft, I would call it a satin finish. It's not a powder finish. It's more of a satin finish, just like a really nice, sheer foundation would do so yeah <laughs> i i was i was literally going to give this away but now i might keep it i promised you a side-by-side -side photo with all eight sunscreens where i'm wearing the foundation on top so i did that i still think even in the in these screenshots which were from the video that the one um I'm going to point it out when I do the editing. The one that I said I thought looked shiny, I still think it looks shiny in the photograph with the foundation. Now, real quick. So of the eight, I really liked four. And the other four, I'm kind of on the fence about. So let's go through them really fast in the order in which I showed them. Starting with Paula's Choice Skin Recovery, that's a yes. Paula's Choice Calm, that one is a yes. Third was Dermatology Daydream. That one is a yes. Even with the amount of um, zinc oxide in that one, it didn't look too whitish on me. Four, the Obagi. Now that one I'm on the fence about just because of how white it made me in, you know, on my neck and all that kind of thing. I didn't think it absorbed into my neck fast enough for me. But if you're going to be outside, that would be a great one to use outside if you get burned. Uh, Skin Medica. I'm on the fence about that one, I think, because of the shininess that it gave me. Number six, Dermatology Physical Tented. I'm kind of on the fence about that. Again, shiny look. Mm. Number seven, Elta MD. I was on the fence about this one, too. Again, being tinted, if you want to go without putting on foundation or BB cream, I was just kind of meh. And then eight Neostrata. This is the one that surprised me. It was tinted. So I put a yes on this one. I really did like that one and I was surprised. Now I've also put together a chart listing all of these products and what is on the chart. So I have the percent of the each active ingredient, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. I have the price with the discount. So all let's see seven of them i have a discount for you the only one i didn't is the paula's choice calm the number of ounces and then the last column is most important if you're looking at price and that's the price per ounce and it's your discounted price per ounce so you can see there there's kind of a wide variety of price per ounce on here if you want to go check them out at least you know what you're really paying for per ounce. So make sure you get an effective sunscreen. These block both UVA and UVB rays. Years ago, they only made them for blocking UVB rays, but this physical mineral sunscreen, I have to get the exact wording. It, the physical mineral sunscreens both block and scatter the UVB rays before they can even penetrate your skin. The chemical ones don't do that. So this is another reason why I like it. And I wear it 365 days a year, every morning, 
rain or shine, summer, winter, springtime, and harvest. Check out one of my other videos on skincare and anti-aging by tapping its image on the right side of your screen or tapping the little eye in the upper right corner, and I'll see you in the next video.